What's good everybody? Today this video is going to be for my entrepreneurs out there, my business owners. We're going to be talking about some tricks that you need to know in order to make Canva work for you a little more easier and for you to get more value out of it. And if you're unfamiliar with Canva, Canva is a free tool that you can use to edit, you know, templates, pictures, you can create uh, thumbnails with it for YouTube, you can create ebooks with it, uh, regular flipbooks, posters, um, posts for your Instagram, for your Facebook, all types of different things you can do with this platform. So if you're a business owner and you aren't using this free tool that's available, then you know I don't know what to tell you, but today is a day that you probably need to go ahead and get started. So this is um, what we're gonna be going over today. And if you guys are unfamiliar with me, my name is Will Frazier. I am your credit and business expert. So if you like to hear information about different strategies and tools to grow your business, as well as obtaining funding for your business, in addition to learning about improving your personal credit and different accounts that you can use to do so, then make sure you hit the thumbs up to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you'll be notified of any new videos I put out just like this one. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into these 12 tips that I wanted to share with you guys to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is gradients. So a gradient is something that you might want to add to your images. You might wanna put it in the background or you just might want it to be a part of, you know, posts or something that you create and it can add some color to whatever it is that you're creating and it adds some dynamic color at that. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna search for gradient under elements. And what you wanna look for is either a circle or a square to do this because there's only an option that will pop up whether you have a circle or a square. As you can see here, the square has these three options for you to change the color. So what you wanna do is only select those two to try to do what I'm about to show you. And as you can see here, we wanna change this color scheme, right? So we click the first color and we can go over here and change that color. You can see that the circle over there is changing based on the colors that I am selecting and blending them in for me. So that is what you want to see when you're doing the gradients. Now, let's say that you actually want to try to select different items that are hovering over each other, but let's say that they're too close for you to actually select them. What you want to do is in that situation, as we can see here, I'm going to go ahead and expand inside. You can see the circle has a um, certain square outside of it. So if I wanted to try to select that little square behind it, I really can't get to it because of the square around the circle. So a little trick that you can do to try to get to that square that is back there behind the circle is to select the circle and then hit control on a Windows and this command on a Mac and then left click on your mouse and it'll actually take you to the one that is behind it. So now when I move my mouse, you can see I no longer have the circle selected. I actually have the square selected. So again, that makes it a lot easier. And if there was another item or element behind that, I can continuously go behind them by holding that command or control and then left clicking on the mouse. Now, in some instances, it could be hard to move an item around, especially if it's behind something like this and you do have it selected because I run the risk of clicking here and then I would end up clicking on the circle that is on top. And then as you can see, the other one gets deselected and now I don't have it anymore. So what I wanna do is I wanna go back to select that one that is behind it. And now I can use the direction keys, the up, down, left, right on my keyboard and I can move this. And this is also helpful in other areas because you can move in little increments or you can hold it and move it a little bit faster. And it's basically moving at one pixel when you just tap the direction buttons. But if I hold down shift while I'm tapping it, it'll move it 10 pixels versus one pixel and it can make it move a lot faster. So those are your different options in regards to moving items around in small increments. And that's especially useful if you need to move something into a very delicate position without overdoing it. Now, another thing that's gonna be an important little hack to do is if you wanna add text to your image, instead of going over here and selecting text and then picking the text that you want, you can simply be over here in the canvas and tap the letter T and it'll pop up with some text here that you can automatically start typing in and you can also edit it over here, change the size, all of that. Now that we have this text here, let's say I wanna center this text in the center of everything. Let's get rid of this. So first off, let's try to get this box centered. So what we wanna do here is we wanna click on position and then I want it to be in the center and then I want it to be in the middle. So now I know that this square is directly in the middle 
and I can do the same thing for the text, hit position, hit middle, and I already know that it's centered because that option wasn't available. So now I know that both are automatically centered for me and I can check that by looking at that. You can see that it was already centered. Now, in addition to that, let's say I wanted this text to be a little bit off center. What I can do is go over here to file. I can actually go to show rulers and it'll show these rulers on the grid over here. And I can actually click here and drag a ruler out over here and I can start the text at a certain point that I might want it to start and it helps me to align that really easily other than that it's a little bit hard to align it at a certain point that might be off center and when you're done with the ruler of course you can go drag it back over there to the side once you're done with that now when it comes to the colors that you're using one thing that you might want to do is you might want to make sure that you already have your brand colors included in whatever it is that you're doing as you can see here when I go over here to the colors to select the different colors you can see right here that I have the ability to go to the colors that are for my particular brand now to have this as far as a brand kit it is a premium feature but but Canva really doesn't cost that much at all so you know it is worth looking into the investment for Canva but again if you don't need these features they everything else that you need is pretty much free but you can see down here where you can add another palette like if you want to use a different color palette than that you can find that in this area but you can also add brand colors and brand logos so that you can already have easy access to those things while you're doing creations so it's just a matter of coming down here and add discover palettes you can find different palettes that you might find to be a good fit you can search for particular colors and you can get the color codes for them and then you can add them and then you can add them to a new palette but basically you can always come out here to brand kit which again is a premium feature and with the brand kit this is where you can add your particular company logos and brand colors all you have to do is come over here to add brand kit make a name for your brand kit and then you would put the color palettes that you want to use so when it comes to uploading pictures a lot of you guys that use it you're gonna upload pictures over here you're gonna go and you're gonna find different pictures and you're gonna upload them but there's actually an easier way to do that you can actually go to a folder that you have on your desktop and you can drag and drop a photo straight from your file folder or from wherever on your computer and you can put it over here and then you avoid having to even worry about uploading anything and waiting for it to upload you can just drag it over and it'll save you a lot of time now another thing that you might want to do is you might want this box to be moved around but you want the text to stay still you don't want this stuff moving separate because then you'll have to move this and then you'll have to move the text so what you would want to do in that scenario is you would want to make sure that you group these two items together so in order to group something together you just highlight the first item hit shift select the next item you can see that both of them are highlighted and then you want to hit group and now these two items are together so wherever you move one you will see the other and the only thing you have to do to ungroup them is make sure that you just have the biggest portion of it selected and then hit ungroup and now they are both back to being separated now another thing that you may want to do is be able to remove the background from a picture canva is really good at editing images as far as cropping out the backgrounds from images all you have to do is go to edit image after you select your image and hit background remover which is a premium feature by the way but by simply selecting that and having it to do all of the work for me which can be more complex on something like Photoshop you can see here that it easily removes the background from the image and has the major image cut out pretty nicely now another thing that you may want to do with your image is add shadow to it adding that shadow can make it look a lot better a little more realistic so what you want to do is select the image hit edit image come over here to shadows you can go over here to backdrop and you can see that it adds a shadow right there behind you can also experiment with the different types of shadows that they have like angled curved drop just to see which one works better for what you're trying to go for but if we select the backdrop there you can click it again and then you can change things like the angle of the shadow so it can be further down if that works better you can get a more horizontal angle or basically change 
what side the angle of the shadow is. You can change the transparency of the shadow to make it a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. You can even change the color of that particular shadow if you wanted to. So now I've added myself over here and what we wanna do is go ahead and zoom in so we can look at this a little bit better. And one easy way to zoom in is to hit control on a Windows or a command on a Mac and then use the scroll wheel on your mouse. You can zoom in to get a better picture really easily without having to click the buttons to zoom. And as you can see, this image right here looks pretty good and professional with me using mostly free tools just to set this up. Okay, so now that we have a little image created here, let's say that this is something that you wanted to use for a post on your social media, like your Instagram, because it's already in that square shape. We're going to say Instagram. So basically, if you want to save this as a template that you can use consistently and just possibly change out the text, depending on what the post is, or maybe change out the image. So what you're going to want to do is go ahead and click right here, and then you want to find the template option, which we can see right here. So you can select the folder that you want to use. Um, and you can hit create new and we're going to put post template. We're going to add the folder and now you can see that we have a folder here and we can publish that template as well. Now when it's time for you to actually find that template that you created, so what you're going to want to do is come over here to the home screen. You can go to all your folders and you can see here that there's a post template folder and you just come right here, click it and then hit use this template and not edit the original. That way you can go straight to using the template. And as you can see, it pops up for us right here. You can see the name copy of your hello text. So you can go ahead and save it from there and continue to work on this new post that you're gonna create. So hopefully you found these tips very useful or hopefully you saw a reason to start using Canva now if you have not been using it in the past. I'm grateful that you guys stuck around to the end of the video and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Again, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you'll be notified of any new videos I drop just like this one.